Hi guys, everyone. Hi. Welcome. This is our Mad World screening here in LA, uh, COVID style outside. And uh, we're gonna just get started with a bunch of questions <laughs> for these great gals. Um, Nicole, we'll start with you since you are the the head chief of all. Uh, so Mad World was uh, actually a theatrical expression at a collection that you created. And so tell us a little bit about the collection and also about the collaboration that you did with the artists per each world that we created for Mad World. So, well, the collection was built around words because words uh, saved my life, really. Um, so we chose some words that were inspirational, but also really timely and I think, um, you know, fun and fashionable at the same time that would um, pair well with the different artists that we chose. So it was uh, fun to work on this project, really um, creative and challenging at times, but we did choose artists that for the most part took really good direction, which is what the collab is about when you're like, you know, most artists aren't, you know, um, so good about putting their, their art on a product, you know, and, you know, we have many different products and ways that they're going to display it. So, but we worked it out and I think we can have a terrific collection that's a lot of fun for both in the house and uh, ready to wear. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, think that, you know, just with what's going on right now, art, expression, just creativity in general, as we all know, just being on set and how just amazing it was to be on Mad World and to be together and to do the things that we love to do because we haven't been able to do them for so long. But uh, it was art like a really big um, just vehicle that you wanted to kind of set your sights on and really push out you know, to the world? Um, do they have, is there meaning behind, you know, just having artists come onto this collection and, you know, work with you? It was meaningful to me. I mean, aside from words for myself, I've always been equal parts of um, creator and entrepreneur. So I really um, wanted to support, especially the artists during this time that aren't all entrepreneurs. And with all of the, you know, art um, fairs and things canceled and uh, stores closing, they have, you know, they're in, in a troubled time, so it was really nice to be able to find something this creative and it became so creative with yeah. the making of the movie yeah. um, that we could really support them and maybe catapult them yeah. up still, both financially and um, just creatively, being able to, to stay creative. That's yeah. the key. So, um, yeah. Love it. And speaking of creative expression, <laughs> you and Ava had a little fun project that took place in a weekend, which was quite ambitious. Um, you and Ava both wrote and recorded a song for our Mad World soundtrack. Can you talk a little bit about that process and how that kind of all came together? Well, you know, Ava is a, is a musician. She's a songwriter, a singer. She plays the guitar, piano. That's a very natural process for her to do this. Me, none of it. <laughs> <laughs> none of it. But I knew I had it in me and I thought, well, isn't this perfect? Because the through line to this movie and to everything I do is that everything is possible. So yeah. I said, well, how much how much time are you guys giving me? <laughs> Three days, Nicole. <laughs> Three days. I know, we're really I said, wow, okay, <laughs> well, uh, right. that was it. I We did it and I think the fun part was like, Wow, we did it in three days. Like, yeah. I mean, if we did that in three days, what could we do with a little more time? Exactly. So, yeah. And it sounded so incredible, that one song in the background of the plane. Every time my mom watches that scene, she goes, oh my God. <laughs> she freaks out every time. She's like, I love that song. So uh, That word was, has a very, very deep meaning yeah. to me. So. Actual big inspirations for Grace and I when we were creating this script in like a minute um, was Hollywood, Ryan yeah. Murphy's amazing series and just both of us are like so inspired by old Hollywood and just the glamour and glitz that you you know feel like you're immediately in when you come to LA I mean I definitely from San Francisco and I'm just curious you guys I mean one of the words that we you know had such a beautiful scene with was iconic and I think iconic means so many things to so many people and just maybe if like you know we could kind of talk to you for all three of you and just hear what you think about that word or just you know um how you want to change it up and again it's a little more start with you um i think iconic to me is something that might change as you change and you're in a different portion of your life 
with different cards. I think it's whatever comes naturally to you, whatever speaks naturally to you and just feels right regarding art and how you express yourself and what you do. I think the more it seems to be closer to you and to your heart, the better it is, the more natural it is, the more creative it gets, because it's an extension of you. It's like when your art is somehow this part of you, whether that is a character or a design or a dress or anything like that, I think when it speaks for you and it speaks as you, then it's like, that's iconic. That came from somebody's, like, that, like it's your, your cells, your heart, your brain, it's all in there. It's not a, you know, inspired in something, it's inspired by you. So I think, and, and I think iconic is supposed to feel, you're supposed to feel iconic, I think. You're supposed to feel that and feel like it's out of my art and what I did. I feel like I really put my my thoughts and my heart into something. That's what I think about it. I love that. I love like all of us having like little iconic moments for you know, mm, our yeah. life. Like, I mean, to look back and say, you know, you're proud of a situation and it is, does feel iconic. Yeah. What about to me? Um, iconic to me is taking that piece of yourself that is different from what might be trending or what might be popular in the moment, whether that's fashion or whatever's going on. I think inserting yourself into whatever you do and seeing that reaction that you get from others and how it impacts the people around you and kind of when you see a piece of art or clothing that isn't the norm and that kind of first reaction that you get like oh that's new that's different i see iconic um in that sort of way something that stands out from the rub okay what about you sharing um okay so for me i would say for me iconic is somebody who uses their platform to make a positive change in the world um, whether that be with their art or even their social media or any, anything that they really put out to for people to consume or to see um, in a good, positive way. I think that's someone who's iconic and that's kind of what I would like to do. How to, um, what's the word, sort of envelop? No. Express. Express, Express being iconic. iconic. You just did. Yeah. You just did. Yeah, I think that's amazing. I mean, I think that all of us want to use like social media for the right reasons and not, especially right now. It's just more that we have to get like really finite about like what we're gonna tell and you know what we're conveying to everyone. Um, so I love that. What about you, Nicole? You know, in my lifetime, I think when I think of iconic, I think of people who've really taken the road less traveled and live very fearlessly, never really caring what anyone thinks of them, and um, and that's just being so truthful to themselves. So um, and I also think of people who are iconic, but you know, those are the people. Yeah, and we, we talk about that a lot in the scene itself. Kathleen, you know, comes in and does this dictionary definition of iconic and talks about, you know, inspiring others and supporting your peers and building each other up and how it's not about, you know, the money or the fame that comes along with these glitz and glamour things that we live in. We live in this, you know, crazy city, but the things that you do with the platform you're given and the things that come out of that platform. You girls also live in the tangled world, which is kind of, you know, this heightened version of the end of the film where there is some conflict occurring and Nicole comes in and starts expressing her true feelings and her true self. How did you guys take the word tangled, which the world is inspired by, and work it into your character work in your background? Was that something you decided to do? And how did that kind of come about? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> With my character in particular, it's something that I'm not usually going out for and reading for. When I told my friend I was going to be a mob boss, like, oh yeah, really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, she's got it down. And Absolutely. that in itself was super exciting yeah. for me. So um, the word tangled was me trying to figure out how did this individual get tangled in the situation with these people taking orders. And I, I think when she comes meets Nicole, she starts to realize put everything into perspective that this isn't what I need to be doing. This isn't what, this is the only path for me. So I think Tangled with that was kind of, it was interesting in creating the character as trying to figure out what is she doing here? And yeah. how, how did she get, I've been thinking about you lately. I think for me it was more of how my, uh, how my character entangles others in her web. Because I did not think of, which I love, 
because I love this character. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, oh, did I, did I make it obvious? <laughs> when I rehearsed I was like, wow. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I, I think I saw her as someone, which is completely fine in, in, in the sense that I did not see any sense of remorse or guilt or I'm gonna find some sort of silver lining and no, I just, I am who I am, I want what I want and you're gonna give it to me. And I, I know the world around me is a world that for so long she has probably controlled and known from the inside out and of course you know the psychology, you know how to manipulate it. So I think she's very comfortable and she's very confident in where she's at and where she's sitting. And I think it was like, okay, how do I make this 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 woman into this young woman into this kind of I see you, I study you, I know how to entangle you, and I know how to how to get what I want from you. I want to make you do what I want you to do. So I think that's kind of what I tried with her, rather than like I didn't see her being maybe like tangled up in in, in this and somehow being you know brought into that. I think she willingly put herself there and brought herself there and now it's her her you know her little place to play yeah so it's bringing others in yeah. um for me tangled in my character i think you know she goes through such a transition of first you know working for more, more and then sort of you know taking the reins and entangling other people with herself and you know helping out nicole and you know sort of forging her own path in this sort of mob world, which is like No, you're oh. good. <laughs> <laughs> you're being pretty open. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, um, yeah, I so basically. Know <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it was kind of fun where I'm figuring out, oh, I'm still tangled in this, but I'm untangled myself yeah. at the same time. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You know what I think was, I was going to say, which like, all the answers to, I think it's really interesting because I felt verbal presence where, you know, the words are coming out and it was, you know, kind of all this energy and then you guys were just, it was so interesting, it was so quiet but important and just revealing um, a description of the characters because you didn't have a lot of words you had to use so much of your body and your emotions and your eyes, I mean, your eyes, your, I mean, there's so much going on in yeah. like these scenes, you know, yeah. 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 and that is, <laughs> that is not so easy at all. interesting to have, you know, four very, very strong women show up differently. And that was, I, I love seeing that scene. And Nicole, you were definitely, you know, in it to win it. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you showed up that day ready to go. So this film happened during a very interesting time in our world. Um, and we had to go through a lot of different hoops to get on set and to actually start creating this story. Um, Lori and I wrote the script at the beginning of quarantine. Um, we're currently in 2020. Um, and it was or kind whoever of whoever sees this in 2030. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. This whole process has been, you know, about being creative during a time where we kind of felt like creativity was very limited. My mom always says, um, limitations are an architect's best friend. She kept telling me that every single day when I woke yeah. up and I was like, oh my God, I can't leave my house. How am I gonna be around creative people and creating art? So we just wanna talk a little bit about the process of filming and being on set and how we got cleared during COVID-19 and during this interesting time in the world. Do you have anything to add about oh my that? Gosh, my laundry list. Um, <laughs> Well, I mean, I think, you know, my biggest takeaway is that, oh my gosh, I can do anything and everything at this yeah. point, um, because, you know, to your um, comment, it's just, you kind of have to plunge along with no fear, and truly, you know, we want to be thoughtful in this time, very safe for everyone, and it's really important to, you know, abide by all of the regulations and restrictions and parameters, whatever way you look at it. You know, these are things set for us to be safe in COVID and really, really highly important. But there was definitely, you know, um, moments where Angela and Grace and I and Nicole did not get up from our desk seat, you know, because we were working on the paperwork, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, I think for filmmakers, you know, uh, 
there's, you know, there's several things that you do have to do and, you know, we should really put some content mm -hmm. together for them. Um, but, you know, the testing is super important and um, just being super aware of, you know, permits and um, locations and, you know, every time you change out, you know, your cast and your location, you offer you up the opportunity to have more testing in place and more parameters set. And so for us, uh, lucky us, we decided we were going to have four locations and four different casts, you know, so along with our crew every day. So it's just, you know, it's just one of those things where it was totally worth it. And when we all got to set, all of us felt that way. It was just a magical, magical time that we couldn't, can't ever change. And or I don't think we'd ever repeat it because, you know, we worked on the creativity and the logistical side by side and at the fastest craziest rapid speed yeah. but it's kind of great because you know you get to set and you know you let the magic happen and there were spontaneous moments that were precious and so yeah I mean it yeah. all worked out yeah. and I would do it again even though I was pulling my hair out at the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and what was it kind of like for you guys because I know you guys are all you know very successful actresses yeah. and always on set and always yes, working and you know we were kind of confined to our homes for quite a while and this project came along and you know, we, we took this cast first mentality where we casted you guys before the script was even completed. And we really wanted to have a cast and a crew who was invested in the project and loved what we were doing and was creative every single day. So what was that process like, you know, of being in quarantine and then getting to be creative? And how did you kind of work with that after being away from work for so long? Um, I, think, I think the creative is just kind of came even more because I think it's that sense where you were had to be locked up for quite a while and feeling like you wanted to just okay I want to step back I want to be in, in my house or in my apartment for a while I don't want to you know go out too much and all these things and I think a lot of us and due to a decrease in work and everything I think there were a lot of us that were just feeling like the creativity is going down or like I'm not doing what I really love I'm not going out there every day and going to set or going to castings and seeing new people so I think being able to show up to set and like it, I was more than happy to take 305 tests or whatever, yeah. you know, whatever it is. <laughs> I was more than happy to do that if I got to stand six, seven feet away, more than happy to. I just, for me, it was nice to feel like I'm taking care of myself. I'm going to go home and I'm not bringing anything home and I'm not, you know, we're not being a danger to each other. And then it's this added on excitement that I'm here and I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm doing a script, I'm working with, you know, cinematographers, I'm working with friends. It's, it was just very, very exciting, at least for me to, to be there and finally be back at it after a bit. Yeah, well, I was just gonna say, I, so cool. I was so excited to come back on the set because, you know, we were in quarantine for so long um, and that really gave me time to sort of really hone in on the script this is really what I want to accomplish on this day. And then when I got there, it was like a firework, you know, you can finally let all of that out and go, oh, I can come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was really cool. And, you know, I felt super safe. Everybody was wearing masks and we were all tested repeatedly. <laughs> um, which was fine. At six in the morning. Yeah, we had to go in the car and like go in the morning. That was so fun. Um, I felt very taken care of. Um, so yeah, I felt really good about the whole experience. I felt super safe and made sure that, you know, Absolutely. I mean, I think uh, creativity really is a muscle and it's something that you really have to keep at and be consistent with. So when the world shuts down, you're like, okay, now how am I going to get all this creative energy out? What am I going to put this energy towards? And um, to have a script uh, finally after months of home alone to my apartment, yeah. not seeing anyone else, um, it really just gave me this motivation and this fire inside of me to do what I love again and to be able to create and especially into such a magical world of mad world you know um, it was just a really wonderful escape I believe and, and especially with COVID um, it felt great to feel really safe on set and comfortable and with people that you trust and know are taking care of themselves self-quarantining testing all that and um, yeah I'm really happy it all was able to come together safely mm -hmm. yeah and I think um, Nicole, we just have to mention, I mean, you like come from this little of acting, but you showed up in such a big way, and I just, 
I think I love that, you know, your actually credit is Nicole Sassman as herself, yeah. which is true. Like you are, you know, a curator, designer, the most fabulous one. And, you know, everyone loves Nicole and, you know, but, you know, that you were basically holding down, you know, for at a retail store and dealing with COVID and, you know, riots and all sorts of crazy stuff that's been going on. And I think it's, you know, I would just love to hear, like, yeah, how you showed up for, you know, each day and, like, actually, like, got your, like, you know, centered and, like, you know, you really did. And it's just, it's a magical and amazing that, you know, I don't know what you were, like, churning pages in, you know, makeup and hair or getting it down or what you are also, doing. but it's I, yeah, wild. I would love to also hear, you know, you were coming to set every single day yeah. as a different version of yourself sure. with different accents, different hair and makeup, <laughs> different wardrobe, like, different worlds, different eras. So I think also maybe a little bit about how you got into each character during this time, you know, when you're dealing with so many other things and how every single day you were able to pull a different part of yourself out and onto the screen. Small miracle. <laughs> <laughs> if I pulled it off, great. I'm not an actress. And if we had to do it again, I'd probably do a lot more preparation. There's a lot of lines, very wordy, not used to it. Didn't seem like any Nicole Sassman I knew, but okay. Um, no, it was fun to do and really creative, and it was just so fast. I'm just glad we were able to pull it off. Um, and I just enjoyed the whole creative process. And it started off, of course, by we were going to do these how-to tips. Is how we started. Uh, what we were going to do for the products. And Lori calls me and says, "What do you think about doing a short film instead?" And I was like, "Okay, okay." <laughs> she does say okay a lot, which is brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> that's just yeah. yeah. work with. You do say yes. Yeah. I find that saying yes to things is where all the magic happens. So I just showed up. Is basically what happened. Yeah, in every way. In a big way. Great. <laughs> Always. And, okay, and the last question is, um, yeah, what does Matter World mean to you at this point? In this day and age, with life going on as it is, what do you see Matter World as? It doesn't have to be negative, it's really positive too. Yeah. I mean, Earth 2020 is pretty much Matter World. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I think there's there's just, I, I'm, I, I'm, I don't know, I might be just one of those crazy people that wants to see good and everything, but I think even though there's like these crazy words going around, pandemic and this and like cancels and blah, and like there's just so many negative things happening and sometimes like just crazy news and things going on. I think there's just also the silver lining of we've gotten to know to know each other, just to everyone, humans all over the world and in a very completely different way and just deeper, I think, than before. And I think there's now that we have something so crazy happening to literally every single one of us in every part of the world, it's 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 nice to see how we're all dealing with it and we're all coming out the other side and what we're doing to make ourselves feel better and grow and learn and all these things because everyone, you know, at the beginning is like, uh, what is happening? I don't know what this is. Like, ah, I don't know. And now there's so many people coming out with stories of like, I did this and I feel this way and I've never felt more confidence or I work on this and this and this and I, I and we're doing a short film I, I think there's still it's mad how we're able to do mad things in a mad world so I think it's it's just cool being able to live in a time like this and still you know keep going and pushing and finding cool things to, to do and promote yeah yeah mad world to me is kind of a testament to see how you roll with the punches, how you roll with the most unexpected circumstances you could imagine. And I think it's a real testament to that, to see how, like you said, how everyone functions differently in these new circumstances and what people are able to create despite the circumstances and even because of the circumstances. And to really take our perspectives and I think, especially this year, everyone's rethinking the world as we've always known it. I think we're kind of opening our minds to things that maybe haven't been our reality. And I think Mad World to that is learning as you go and understanding, you know, there's so much good to come from the bad. We can learn even in the wildest situations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, to me, Mad World, I think also is just showing like 
as a creative outlet that no matter what happens in the world, that there's always going to be artists who are making something beautiful. Um, well, bitch, 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 there's so many crazy things happening in the world our energy and our actions and our reactions to the things around us they leave an impact in every little place we go and I think if we can decide to leave a positive impact instead of a negative one I think that's how we can build the whole world together even higher up you know Nicole leaves these magical gifts in each in every single world and she's most definitely affected you know their lives and her life whether she sees it for the good or the worse mm -hmm. our actions make change whether we want them to or not and i think that's a really important thing to remember during these times and yeah mad world mad world is us we are we are the mad world we yeah, make up everything <laughs> 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 